Welcome to the special edition of the Feast of All Souls Day. Following the Feast of All Saints Day on November 1st, we have the Feast of All Souls Day on November 2nd. How did this feast originate? Now we hear this from Saint Peter Damien, who was a great theologian and a reformer, who called out especially the sexual immorality in the church, especially uh, homosexuality. He writes in the 900s that there was a pilgrim from France. He was returning from the Holy Land and was shipwrecked on an island. And there was a cave that he came across and that cave belched out heat and gas, which we now know as a volcano. Near the cave, the pilgrim met a monk or hermit. And this hermit explained to that pilgrim that he could overhear the demons in the cave and they were complaining about all the souls that were released from purgatory through the prayers, penance and the masses of the monks in Cluny in France. So when the French pilgrim returned to France, he visited the monastery in Cluny and there recounted the hermit's story to the abbot of the monastery. The abbot was known as Abbot Odillo and he was impressed by his testimony and he said to his monks that we need to do even more for the souls in purgatory. So Delo set apart the day of November 2nd as the day of penance. From this tradition spread the practice of commemorating the feast of All Souls Day after the All Saints Day. Now this is also found in scriptures in the book of Maccabees where Judah Maccabees in 2 Maccabees chapter 12 prayed for those who died in battle who were wearing pagan amulets. So we see that the practice of praying for the dead has Jewish roots. What is purgatory then? In very plain language, if I would have to put it, it is heaven's beauty parlor. Now, this is what the church teaches from the Catechism of the Catholic Church with support from scriptures. All who die in God's grace and friendship, but still imperfectly purified, are indeed assured of their eternal salvation. But after death, they undergo purification so as to achieve the holiness necessary to enter the joy of heaven. The church gives the name purgatory to this final purification of the elect, which is entirely different from the punishment of the damned. The church formulated her doctrine of faith on purgatory, especially at the councils of Florence and Trent. The tradition of the church, by reference to certain texts of scriptures, speaks of a cleansing fire. As for certain lesser faults, we must believe that before the final judgment, there is a purifying fire. He who is truth says that whoever utters blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will be pardoned neither in this age nor in the age to come. From this sentence, we understand that certain offenses can be forgiven in this age, but certain others in the age to come. This teaching is also based on the practice of prayer for the dead already mentioned in sacred scripture. Therefore, Judas Maccabees, which we just saw earlier, made atonement for the dead that they might be delivered from their sin. From the beginning of the church has always honored the memory of the dead and offered prayers in suffrage for them above all the Eucharistic sacrifice so that thus purified they may attain the beatific vision of God. The church also commends almsgiving, indulgences and works of penance undertaken on behalf of the dead. Let us help and commemorate them. If Job's sons were purified by their father's sacrifice, why would we doubt that our offerings for the dead bring them some consolation? Let us not hesitate to help those who have died and to offer our prayers for them. Now, unlike most people who think that purgatory is a second chance to enter into heaven, it is not. That is a wrong misinterpretation of the church's teaching. Purgatory simply means those who died in God's grace, but still not purified, go through a purging or a cleansing process in heaven's beauty parlor before they can meet their bridegroom at the wedding supper of the Lamb. It makes sense, isn't it? So on All Souls Day, we pray for the holy souls in purgatory. 
we make sacrifices on their behalf especially those whom we know and our loved ones and for those who have no one to pray for them there is also the tradition of visiting graveyards and cemeteries to pray for the dead who can no longer pray for themselves there is also an indulgence for those who visit a cemetery and offer certain prayers on this day so let us look at the liturgical readings of all souls day on november 2nd now there are many optional readings taken on this day so we will look at the first set of the readings the first reading is taken from wisdom chapter 3 which says that the righteous belong to god the foolish may think that righteous people who go through the trials of this life and are eventually dead are to be considered as a thought of affliction but they are in fact in the hands of god who are now rejoicing in his presence even if they are in purgatory it's just a matter of time they will see god face to face so let us strive to be faithful even in the face of death or trials because our unseen reward awaits us the response to psalm the psalm is taken from psalm chapter 23 the famous psalm the lord is my shepherd and that's the response the lord is my shepherd there is nothing i shall want or another response may be though i walk in the valley of darkness i fear no evil for you are with me so this psalm speaks about how how the lord takes care of his own people jesus our good shepherd supplies our every need so we do not lack in anything as the psalm suggests so when we go through dark moments he will sustain us and as the psalm says he will prepare the eucharistic banquet for us or the eucharistic table for us in the presence of our enemies the mass is the place where jesus satisfies us with the bread from heaven his body and his blood in the similar way how god sustained the israelites in the wilderness with bread from heaven for 40 years the lord sustains us as we walk in the wilderness of this world awaiting our promised land is the lord your shepherd do you trust him to supply your every need do we avail of the eucharistic table or the banquet that is prepared for us daily something to think about the second reading taken from 1 corinthians chapter 15 is the promise of the bodily resurrection we profess in the creed we say i look forward to the resurrection of the dead because jesus has defeated dead we all await our glorious immortal bodies we live with this hope so do we fear death or are we ready to die so that we can put on our heavenly dwelling because death is indeed the gateway to our new life that awaits us now the gospel is taken from the gospel of john chapter 6 this is the promise of eternal life for those who believe in the son jesus says for this is the will of my father that everyone who sees the son and believes in him may have eternal life and i shall raise him up on the last day therefore in the mass in the eucharistic prayer we pray for the those who have died this is what the priest prays remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them lord into the light of your face which is the beatific vision that is why we should not fear that but we should be willing like saint paul was willing that he could be with god so this is the set of the uh, the first set of the readings now let us look at the next set of the optional liturgical readings that is also taken from mass the first reading is also taken from the book of wisdom chapter 4 speaks about the just who are with god similar to what we saw in the previous first reading sometimes we wonder why the just are taken away early from earth here the book of wisdom says that because his or her soul was pleasing to the lord so the lord took him or her from the midst of wickedness is there someone in your family whom the lord has taken away early or are you aware of someone who was very righteous or devoted to serving god whom the lord took away very early and then you wonder and you question why did the lord have to take him or her away it could be as the book of wisdom suggests because the lord wanted to preserve them from the wickedness in this world 
So this is something that we need to think about as we read this passage. The response to the psalm taken from Psalm 25, the response is, To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Or another response is, No one who waits for you, O Lord, will ever be put to shame. As one of the verse in the passage suggests, it says, Preserve my life and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me because I wait for you, O Lord. Let us be faithful and let us show integrity in the midst of wickedness and God will preserve us and he will reward us. Even if the world mocks or laughs at us, we should be faithful because there is a reward waiting for each one of us. The second reading is taken from Philippians chapter 3. It speaks about our citizenship in heaven. We do not belong to this world. We belong to heaven. Heaven is our homeland. We are immigrants in this world, waiting to reach our promised land, which is heaven. Therefore, we invest and we work hard for heaven. Like on earth, we also invest and work hard for a future year on earth. But we know that this earth is passing away. But how do we prepare ourselves to reach heaven? What kind of investments are we making for our future homeland? Jesus says to lay up treasures in your final homeland. Lay up treasures for in heaven. So that is something that we need to think about as citizens of heaven. The gospel is taken from John chapter 11. Where Jesus is the resurrection of the faithful. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And he who lives and believes in me will never die. Do we believe in this? Let us now look at the third set of the optional liturgical readings that are also taken for, for November 2nd for Mass. The first reading, Isaiah chapter 25, says that death will be destroyed forever. And this is what we read in the book of Revelation Chapter 21 verses 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. This is the kind of life we are all looking forward to, aren't we? And therefore we prepare ourselves daily to immigrate to that homeland where we will live a life that is free from all trials where there will be no more suffering, our tears will be wiped away. The response to the psalm taken from Psalm 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Or another response is, I believe that I shall see the good things of the Lord in the land of the living. We all await to see the Lord in the land of the living, which is heaven. Till then, we wait patiently as we journey, as we immigrate to our final homeland. The second reading taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 4 speaks about our imperishable bodies that we all look forward to. So the trials in this life are momentary as the passage suggests. Nothing compared to the glory that waits one, each one of us. So we look forward to receiving our immortal bodies. Uh, this is like Thor in the Avengers except in heaven it is real stuff unlike the Avengers. So, it is something that we should look forward to. The Gospel of John taken from chapter 14, Jesus says he will prepare a place for us in our homeland and he will come to take us. So he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. We trust the Lord. We keep walking, we keep walking through to this world, waiting to reach our homeland as citizens of that country. We already received our citizenship. You see, unlike Many people today who travel to other countries receive their PR and then after living for a certain number of years we receive citizenship. Jesus says, your citizenship is already in heaven. You don't need a PR. You already have the citizenship. It's just a matter of time that you immigrate over there and settle over there. Till then, we trust. We trust him because he said, I go to prepare a place for you in your homeland. 
in your in in the place where i will come and take and you will be with me i will be with you and we will all live together that is one place we should all look forward to immigrate now there are also other optional readings taken on november 2nd and if you notice all the other readings they all speak about heaven our homeland and the kind of life we live with christ so as immigrants here on earth we should not be comfortable or attached with the riches and the sinful pleasures of this world lest we blow up our chances of eternity and our promised land like the israelites in who died in the wilderness in the old testament and they did not reach the promised land so should we be very careful walk the narrow path it's not going to be an easy journey but the rewards are great let us store up our treasures in heaven let us invest there because the stock market over there is never going to fall the returns are going to be great so we look forward to our promised land so today let our prayer be for those who have hoped for this life we remember the prayer that is made in the eucharist remember lord also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of god rest in peace amen i wish you all a blessed feast of all souls day